Well, I'm uh, going to explain this uh, uh, exercise in Unreal. Uh, just remember that you have all these um, tutorials uh, already in the canvas. Uh, most of them are uh, in PowerPoint. Sometimes I also include documentation from uh, Epic. What we are going to do today basically is to construct by importing some elements uh, a basic uh, scenario for this uh, movie that is going to be filmed using Unreal. So we are going to import these mannequins and we are going to import some assets from different sources and then we are going to create cameras in order to transmit uh, uh, in order to make um, the movie. If you want, to, uh, if you go to the week 02, uh, you can find here the, all the materials you're gonna need. Uh, this uh, uh, Kenny, it's a very useful resource. Basically, it's a website where there are thousands of uh, different assets you can use uh, they are usually low polygon uh, they are 2d and 3d they are different materials this one for example so uh, because they are very simple and low poly are very good for this kind of exercise and um, so we are going to use these assets uh, i already uh, download this kit furniture kit and then you can change the textures or materials as you want. So just download the coffee table and also this furniture updated uh, file. You know, this is the only thing we are going to use today. Coffee table uh, in this uh, folder, you can just load this, uh, this basic uh, template they created. So here what you can find is already, uh, I already imported all this uh, basic scenario. You can customize by importing any other asset. I just prepare this to uh, be faster and focus on the other aspects of the exercise thing. So for example, let's, let's import another asset. I now we are prepared to add the cinematics. Uh, you know that there are a couple of systems, different systems that are still um, coexisting in this uh, uh, Unreal ecosystem. And you have uh, the master sequence, which is a, mm, uh, a, a group of sequence, uh, basic sequence that are uh, constructed with this module called sequencer okay and then we have the matinee which is uh, legacy legacy means that it's about to disappear so and because probably uh, it's a more advanced a more uh, in many aspects simple procedure i would recommend to go to the level sequence which is kind of the standard so you just add level sequence it asks you to create a new one so i'm going to say uh, sequence always try to be organized in relation to the sequence if you know the number that you have um, planned in your storyboard or uh, just uh, in your script or whatever you can I can imagine that it's the sequence 4 for example okay and then uh, you can put a description or whatever coffee table Okay, so the name cannot contain spaces, so you have to, to do it with, with different symbols, with, uh, but you cannot include the space on the, on the title. Okay. So this is the Windows of Sequencer. With this sequencer, what we are going to have is different tracks, different layers of movement. 
So what we are going to do is select the actors. Remember that in this occasion, when we call uh, what we call actors, in fact, can be any object. I mean, a light can be an, an actor. Um, cameras are actors, and of course, or or mannequins. These mannequins from Unreal, they are actors as well. Okay. It's just that in the case of these particular actors, they can follow actions, okay? Actions that we call animations and that they are going to, to play, okay? So the, that would be the, the performance of the, of the actor, if you want. So uh, right now, for example, which uh, elements are going to be moved, which elements are going to... to to star in this uh, performance and basically we are sure that the actors are going to do something okay so I select one of these uh, this I call it Jason okay it's one of uh, uh, of these actors uh, in this scene okay I just track actor you add Jason okay shows up here and then I select the other one and it says track at Darren. Okay, so we have Jason and Darren. What we can do now is transform the characters. Okay, the transformation of the character is going to be related with the space. So, for example, location, we create a keyframe. It would mean, it would mean that in this second XYZ, this is going to be the position of the character in that. Uh, in that second of the animation, okay. The same for uh, Darren, okay. So you just need to select the keyframes you're going to animate, but just for the sake of uh, making this more simple, I selected the both of the three of them. But honestly, you need just to select in case you are going to animate and just the properties. That you're going to animate okay so then later what you have here is the number of frames remember that we are in 30 frames per second you can change that if you need it okay the power system or whatever so imagine that uh, roughly after two seconds okay, that would be 50 i want them to to move well, it's important that you select here the auto K. Okay, this one with the E. Okay, and then this one says key all. It would be just to make this thing more simple. Okay, so in this case, in this case, sorry, we have uh, Darren, and I selected here first position, and I move to the second position. Okay, so you can move as as uh, many as you want. Remember that this is a linear movement, and then you might want to tweak a little this, but once that you have defined the whole movement, you can smooth it a little. Okay. So note that in this case we have a motion, some kind of motion, but it doesn't imply that there is an animation. Okay, We just say that the character is going to be around this area. Yes, I'm saying around because it depends on the posing, and uh, and then it will finish up in the, the will we finish in this other point okay, in this other coordinates. Okay, so if you want that to to move uh, through animation, you have to select here an animation, and just the character would adopt that that posing. But of course, I would suggest first to go here and check which animation we, you might be, because uh, you might want the character, for example, to jump from one place to another. So you can start by using this animation and then customize that. Or you might want uh, to do a walking or any other, uh, any other uh, action. So what I did in the template was uh, just to to get the the idle animation, this one where the character is is breathing. Okay. 
So if you click on that, you will see that basically well, this, this character is just is he, he or he's just breathing. Okay. So what I did is just uh, duplicate this and uh, create this new one, which I call sit. And then it's, it's much better. Important thing is to create keys when you move this. So it is uh, okay. creating and then you put the key and you get that in this one. Okay, so if that makes a little more sense to you, okay. Maybe. Okay. So in the moment that system, you go to the skeleton tree, these are all the different parts of the body, so it's a very complex uh, puppet. Okay, this is another topic, how to animate characters is not uh, the main goal of this, um, this exercise. So you save this and just create another one which makes that to look into a different direction or whatever so, although it, it looks the same on there. so uh, we have Jason and Aaron but they are playing different animations okay so we have seen that in this case Darren is replicating with that animation which is the breathing and also that kind of posing but then we have this motion we have applied okay so we can make it more sophisticated by customizing uh, the animation and uh, the movement. When you create a camera here, you can see the camera is it's here and it has two subcomponents. One is the camera, the main component, and the other is the spawn. Okay, just to uh, determine it that is controlled by another uh, module. In this case, the module is uh, camera cuts which is the combination of the different uh, cameras. You can have more than, I mean, you can have as many cameras as you want, but cameras, camera cuts could be the, the resulting narration, the resulting montage if you want. Okay, so when we have the camera cuts, what we are seeing here is the result, but because there is just one camera, it's actually camera one, which is in this case, it has, it has been called Cine camera actor six. Okay, so we can rename that or whatever. But the important thing is that we move this camera and we animate that camera. Okay, so when you select the camera this way, or you select that here because it has been created already on the composition, you can, for example, select the camera here. Okay, and It disappears here. Yeah. Okay. F. Actually, you don't see the camera as you would do with uh, the cameras that you create in the um, uh, in the level design uh, element in the level editor. But what you can do anyway, it's pilot the camera. So right now it's locked. It means that you, you are using that camera, you are watching that camera. Okay, so what you can do is just pilot the camera. Actually, you are already piloting the camera. Okay, the only thing you need to do is piloting the camera here, selecting. In this case, we are already, so it would be a stop piloting the camera, in which case we have the uh, regular editor vision and we'll see the camera here okay this is the camera that we can see just on the sequencer okay uh, right now uh, well in fact yeah if you go to um, out of the sequence of the sequencer okay you will see that the camera is not here anymore okay so, uh, because this is a camera just for cinematic purposes, so it doesn't have to be on the level. Okay, so you, uh, if you create the camera on the level, it would be also 
uh, a factor that it can show up in the screen sequencer. Okay, so there's two different approaches to do this. Okay. Anyway, we select the camera again. So there is one difference between saying, okay, I want the camera to be close to the to the characters. Okay, in which case we are uh, watching what the camera brings us. Okay. Here. Okay, so we can move the camera in that sense, saying, for example, I want to start with the uh, with the sofa, with this armchair, sorry, with this coat or whatever, with this armchair, and then moving to the characters. You can you can do that. Of course you can. You can also pilot the camera. Pilot the camera would be just select the camera, pilot the camera so I know exactly I want this and then I want to move to this character or to this one or whatever okay so you have to decide what, how you want to move your camera and just animate that how you animate this uh, it's just using keyframes here you have the to transform again we start with the zero it's going to be for example the transform element here okay so we create keyframes for location, rotation, scale. Okay, although it's probably location and rotation the ones we are going to use. Okay, and then uh, the uh, these other properties are the properties that are related to cinematography, which is the uh, lesson on the week third. That uh, if you have already read the contents and materials for that lesson. Uh, you would understand this better. If not, I would recommend you just go to to the canvas, okay, and look for this uh, virtual cinematography lesson. Okay, it is important that you understand the the properties of the camera, the physical one, uh, in the sense that the virtual one is going to uh, behave in the same way. Okay, so we are with this camera, just the camera one. Then you can duplicate the camera, whatever if you find, or you can just copy the properties if you want to apply the same properties to the other camera. It can make some sense depending on what kind of shot you want to do to modify the properties. Okay, so uh, the first value is referring to the focal length. Okay, remember this is millimeters. And uh, 35 tends to be the uh, the one that is more uh, considered to be the standard, okay? Uh, between 35 and 50, that's kind of uh, the typical value, okay? If we go to something higher, okay, uh, we uh, should be uh, should be changed in the image as a result, okay? If you are selecting the camera, you will see that, okay, I select it now, okay, and obviously the larger the focal length is, it's, 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 it's making a zoom, okay. Another uh, component, uh, we cannot see that now because it's very close to the subject, but another component is affecting to the use of perspective, okay, no, it's to the reflection of the different elements within the, the plane, which has an effect on your perception of the perspective, okay? So, uh, this is the f-stop, okay? So remember, also, if you want uh, a, an unfocus element, uh, well, if you want uh, that kind of bokeh effect, what, uh, in fact, is called the fulfilled, what you might want is to uh, maintain this aperture uh, very large, and because you know uh, the f is associated to the local uh, the focal length, uh, the, sorry, the, the depth of field, uh, it might be better that you actually uh, keep this uh, a little open, okay? So a low number, and then it is a question of yes, okay. Uh, 
focusing the character that you want. If you want to exaggerate this this depth of field, uh, you might need to to go to a higher, okay, a higher uh, focal length. The problem with that this would imply you to move the camera a little because this is so close okay? so maybe you might appreciate that that's uh, oh, sorry okay if we can do something like that uh, obviously what we need to do now is to focus okay so you go to the properties of the camera uh, Okay, you select here camera and then here on details you are going to see the different properties like kind of advanced properties which affect for example to the format okay we are not going to change that now but the exercise that I proposed uh, includes the exploration of these uh, different uh, elements uh, if you go to focus settings, you see here this eye drop. You just use this to click on the on the object that you want to focus. So when you see that, we see uh, the, all the character and focus, and it's just because I use a very high local uh, focal length. It's on the 60s. Okay, so it could be even more exaggerated. So as a, as a result, this one is going to change, okay? So I don't know if that... So this can make sense, for example, for, um, a, for a conversation, but not to uh, a on shoulder shot, more kind of a, a close-up conversation, okay? Uh, where we don't really want to show the, the backgrounds because maybe we didn't work on them or they are very poor or we, we just want to focus on the characters okay problem with this as you know is the character will move and if the character moves uh, it can get out of focus very easy okay but in any case what you have to do here again is select the camera go to sequences select camera and then in properties just uh, uh, what is the focus? Yes, focus the character. Okay, especially not the character. Is 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 the okay? Is the uh, the face? But you are now selecting the the shoulders, so you might need to go to uh, to manual focus. Okay, because in this case to see how it is very very specific any the little you move the camera it would affect totally the focus because uh, we are right now in a very shallow depth of field okay okay so that that would be uh, the configuration of that shot as far as we keep okay so i don't know if the character is moving enough to see differences okay but yeah it seems that it's not okay that's great okay so we just got this one and Darren it's moving with the animations Darren okay that's it okay well if we we see that I use it this template of the person, so what we can do be, is visit the, the scene, okay, where the characters are not doing any animation, okay. That is where we need to construct on the blueprint the um, the basic script of play this animation, which is the very beginning. For example, play this opening cut scene or play this end cut scene or something like that. A blueprint. Okay, we open the level print. Okay, so now it's it's empty. It's um event begin play. So well what happened when the 
this starts okay we are going to play uh, a sequence okay just that it's very simple In the sequence okay we have here when we start it needs to play this so the play sequence player okay is this one it creates a target sub component and this one is is what we need okay so it's basically oops that is what we want to do okay just uh, even begin play play this sequence okay we compile and we save okay and that's it if you if you play the sequence now it goes directly to our uh, animation where the character is breathing okay and the camera is focused on just this character What's, uh, what can we do if we want to create two other cameras, like for example, another camera for the other actor, or a camera that uh, reflects the movement uh, of the scene, the general, uh, the general frame. So let's start with that one. We just uh, go to create new camera. Again, this one, I don't know why, it's called uh, actor 16. So uh, this other one is now being piloted. Okay, remember it is here, pilot active, it's piloting this camera. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to to pilot the camera just to be okay in a more general frame. Okay. Oops. Okay, imagine that we want something like that. Okay, like uh, okay, okay, something like that. So we have here the movements. I want to collect this. So I create the camera for the beginning as well for the frame zero. But then I would jump from one camera to another. Okay. So, uh, well, in this case, maybe we want to be sure that the camera is uh, 35, or I would say that we can go to something like that, okay, just to collect, uh, uh, to be more absent of perspective, okay, and uh, yeah, maybe also a low aperture or whatever. Okay, obviously, if you put lights, uh, this uh, scene won't work okay and now you you see that uh, uh, change in the depth of field and again you need to select the camera okay and you might need to okay, go to manual focus okay and to focus the two characters because they should be at in a very similar distance okay okay so this is this is our shot so we have both shots now, but now the one selected is this one or this one, depending on what we... If we want to register that, what we have... Okay, at that point we want to introduce the camera 6. Okay, so we are going to... We go to shots, you should be able to see. Let's stop piloting the camera, okay. select this okay and you see here the change on the animation reflecting uh, this story the, depending on all decisions and the montage okay so hope it, it has been more or less clear uh, I know one real is uh, a little tricky uh, just follow the tutorials and let me know if you have any any questions so far okay